Welcome to the 2022 Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, our 35th anniversary, presented by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. You're about to learn from some of the top saltwater anglers in the country. Now, the key to getting the most in the seminar series is to listen to the little subtleties, the adjustments that we are doing when the fishing is tough. This is what we like to refer to as the golden nuggets of the seminar series. We're about ready to get underway, so let's get right down to it. Coming to you from the IGFA in South Florida, it's the 35th Annual Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Now, here's George Poveromo. Welcome to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, edition 2022. A great panel of experts here for the topic at hand, which is light tackle tuna, dealing with yellowfin, bluefins, and blackfin tuna. We have Joe Trainer out of South Jersey, who does the offshore scene big time, uh, all the way down to Maryland, throughout the Bahamas, highly experienced. We have Captain Ariel Madero from Marathon, who crushes the black and tuna beat on the humps or on the wrecks and reefs of the uh, mid to lower Florida Keys. And Captain Ben Sharp, who is a highly experienced big game angler that does the tuna fishing throughout New England, South Florida, as well as the Bahamas, and sometimes even into the Gulf. So I'm gonna pick your brains on this because it's a very intriguing session. It's light tackle tuna fishing. We all know you put the big guns out for your bluefins, yellowfins, their traditional tactics, but you see a lot more of the sport coming in to trying to target these, not only on lighter tackle, but artificial lures as far as jigging as try to get some on, you know, top water plugs too. So Joe, we're gonna start off with you and try to get say yellowfin tuna or so, or maybe even the bluefins to what they call jig and pop, where you're dropping jigs or you're trying to pop. What's gonna set up the conditions that would enable you to have an opportunity to possibly catch some of those tuna on lighter gear with jigs or maybe even top water? Well, chunking obviously, when we, we anchor up and chunk and sometimes they are on the top and top water. Now let me hold you on that. When you say anchor up and chunk, are you talking about the near shore grounds versus out in the canyons? So we'll or anchor on the near shore stuff, yeah. Okay. And you know, sometimes we can get some live bait and get them on the surface where we can throw some stuff at them. Like Plugs. live chumming? Yes. Okay. You know, we, we don't have the live bait. We can get, you know, peanut bunkers. They don't tend to live that long. Minnows work fantastic, which a lot of people don't do. They stay on the surface and try to hover around your boat. We, and some tackle shops sell large ones, so we can throw them out and they're hardy and they'll swim around the boat forever. And then you can get the tunas on top that way and start to catch them on your poppers and stuff like that. So the live chumming is starting to, uh, to catch on its way up up there in, yeah. in a jersey. Are you looking for anything in particular on the sonar? Is this, you're looking for the sand eel hatch? What's gonna tell you, hey, this is looking good. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get set up in here and we'll start doing the routine to try to get these fish on, you know, typical tactics, but also have a shot at either jigging or popping. Well, so we just got past the, the uh, I just was sea bassing a couple weeks ago, and we've seen the bluefin 10 trips in a row. Now, for us, it's very hard to, to get on top of them. Center consoles are, have an absolute distinct advantage because we're too big, and we can't get upwind fast enough where they can, the, when these bluefins are moving so fast, the smaller boats have a distinct advantage where they can get upwind of them okay. and cast into them. And they were catching them and we were watching them catch them. But by the time we get set up and put somebody on our bow, they walk around the bow, it's, it puts us, puts us Big way, behind, way behind the eight ball. Gotcha, now are you seeing any other signs of life out there, be it whales or porpoises or anything that, that, that makes an area look alive or? So in December this year, um, we had a lot of like white seagull type birds and with porpoise around them. And you could actually mark them on the radar. And they were in 20 fathoms on some hills and stuff like that. We do not know what bait it was. It was in mid mid water. But you were marking them on the sonar. Yep. Okay. And then when you're in that zone, you see the bait and the activity. Chances are the tunas would be around. And you'd see them rolling. All right. Very good. Ben, let's go over to you a little bit too. I mean, you you've done uh, quite a bit of fishing throughout the Northeast for yellowfins and bluefins. And I know you're highly experienced here and in the Bahamas. So I wanna sort of steer you a little bit towards the Bahamas. We're starting to get into catching these fish on jigs or throwing top waters. You get to an area like Northwest Providence Channel in the Bahamas or some of those zones there. And 
you know, we get so in tune to trying to do our live chum and to try to get the, the t traditional way that we've been doing up there. Right. Is there an opportunity to try to catch those fish on top water as well as jigs in the Bahamas? Uh, yeah, there definitely is. Um, so we, we use Northwest Channel. I mean, that's a predominantly bird kind of deal where you can find these sure. fish and they'll, they'll be on the surface. Uh, well, typically they'll be on the surface, but you know, a lot of times you'll mark them and then you can you know, do your chumming, your be it chunking or live bait. Mm -hmm. I mean, but once you get those fish up on the surface, you can definitely uh, start throwing poppers and stuff. However, I, I found that if you, if you vertical jig fish, sometimes they'll, they'll actually get spark them to pop up. So you get up on there, you have your guys doing their thing, you know, starting out mm -hmm. with the live bait or the dead bait, have somebody vertical jigging. Normally they'll get the bite first and they'll tend to res they'll respond to that one fish come up on the, on the surface and then your guys throwing poppers will get an opportunity. Sure. All right, hold that because I want to even quiz you more on trying to stay on top of those tuna because they move a lot. And we're going to go to commercial break and I'm going to come right back at you. You're watching the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. The topic, light tackle tuna. We're coming right back. The Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series is brought to you by Simrad. Go with Simrad and go with confidence. Penn, let the battle begin. Sirius XM Marine, weather, fish mapping, and entertainment for anglers. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. Angle, portable fridge freezers and high performance coolers. George will be right back. Welcome back to the 35th Annual Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Let's get right back to George. You're watching the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series filmed on location at the International Game Fish Association. The topic we're into right now, light tackle tuna. I'm talking to Captain Ben Sharp on trying to dial these yellow fins that you see in the Bahamas, more specifically Northwest Providence Channel to take either top water or taking the irons when you're dropping them down for a jigging situation. Now, you're out there, you see the birds, and sometimes they're moving. A lot of times, um, there'll be a group of birds that I call, they're, they're like the liars. They're the guys that, that like, it seems like they want to get you away from the tunas, mm -hmm. you know? But if you just, if you depend on your electronics, you can mark them most of the time, all right? Um, and, you know, the, the, the birds will literally come back around mm -hmm. to you if you just sit back on them. You know, keep your, keep whatever chump stick you got going on because I mean, even though we're trying to catch them on, on poppers and jigs, it's still kind of dependent on what you got put in the water too. Absolutely, so. for sure. Ariel, uh, uh, down your way, blackfin tuna, you got all the traditional ways of catching them. You and I got together and we did a show that will be airing soon on World of Saltwater Fishing. Oh, we were getting them on topwater plugs and that was a blast to get those blackfins on topwater. Now, what sets up the right scenario that you could get these black fins on topwater plugs? The ideal uh, to catch them, you know, in topwater lures is uh, when they're chasing flying fish. Okay. You know, the, the birds get on them, uh, flying fish coming out of the water, you know the tune is there, he's looking for the flyer. So if you can get that popper on the area, he's, he's, gonna, he's gonna bite it. Uh, the other option is live baiting, you know, just chumming, plenty of live bait chumming, get them popping on the live baits and then throw the chugger in there. Sit just on top of it and you know there's fish around so you can just cast in you know, any direction and try to get them to bite. Gotcha. And you see the boats up there, they're all stationed up current and live chumming and all that. And how would you think if somebody threw a topwater plug in your live chum while you're doing that? Uh, it will <laughs> probably work, but you'll get a lot of, uh, of stuff people. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, just doing that to, to get yeah. you on a little aggravated mood there. And I remember with the uh, the black fins on there, now we were using, what was it, a 50 pound liter uh, on the, the, the chugs itself. And I brought the yep. plugs that, that we were using, the Rapala Explode, they come in you know, different sizes. You could, if you want to match them up to a flying fish pattern, a mahi pattern or whatever, and it was just casting out with, uh, you know, 30 pound test braid outfits with that mono leader on it. Yep. And the subtlety now, talk to us about working this top water plug for black fins. It is a pause or a constant retrieve. It's different ways to work it. I like to move it fast. Um, so, you know, pop, pop it hard so it splashes a lot and then keep it moving, keep, you know, keep, keep it moving like it's a flying fish trying to get away. So you're looking for no pauses, just a lot of fast motion and yes. spraying to do That's it? That's the way I do it. That doesn't mean there's any better or, or worse than, than stopping and giving but it a little, little pause. But it's yeah. obviously working. 
It worked time. for me, yeah. Sure. Joe, let's go back up there, your yellow fins or your blue fins too, and you get the opportunity where you get them on top water, and you're talking about the retrieve. Is there any differences in the retrieve? And I'll play devil's advocate with you on this one. Uh, we did a show up there off of Rhode Island for the blue fins. And he was saying, when you're doing the blue fins, uh, just keep that constant popping away. We had gone to Jersey right after that to end up doing yellow fins. And we were trying to get the yellow fins on it. And the pro I was fishing with them was saying, you start popping it, popping it, give it a pause. Then start popping it, give it a pause. He liked to pause in there for the yellow fins where the blue fin authority said, don't pause it, keep it going. So we're gonna keep our viewers in suspense for that answer from you once we get back from the commercial break. You're watching the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. We'll be right back to Light Tackle Tuna. The Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series is brought to you by Rapala, your best shot at a world record. Suffix, always use the best line. VMC, your expert in hooks. Williamson Lures for the Pelagic Playground. Starbright, blending technology with performance since 1973. George will be right back. Welcome back to the 35th Annual Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Let's get right back to George. We're back to the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, Light Tackle Tuna. I'm discussing a tactic with Joe Trainer dealing with catching blue fins and yellow fins on topwater plugs. And Joe, we're coming right back to you here. The blue fins usually are moving. You know, we're getting them there for two, three, five days, six days max, most years. Mm -hmm. Where it seems like the yellow fins, when they're there, they're residents. They, they'll stay there for as long as you keep feeding them. You know, we had big yellow fins this year, the hot dog lump off of uh, Ocean City. We were kind of overmatched. You know, we only went down there a couple times because they were 100 pound class fish wow. biting 30 pound liter. It's not gonna end well. <laughs> You know, so we mix in the kite and stuff like that. But for the, you know, I always think that, you know, the blue fins are always traveling. So that's, you know, that quicker retrieve, they're, they're eating and going north. Whereas the resident, the resident yellow fins will come in there and hold up in there until they feel like leaving. Sometimes it can be a month. Commitment is sure. a big thing. Doing it for an hour and a half straight is, a, is what, you know, it'll pay off. But getting the commitment out of people because we're usually busy chunking, feeding lines out, doing this, that, and the yep. other thing. If you set one guy committed to it, it will work. Well, sure, and it's all about how they want to do the mindset for the sport itself. You stick with traditional, which if that's working, hey, you want to catch fish, but if you put that little sporting aspect, it's pretty cool to start getting these tuna on top water and see those explosive hits. It, it, it's pretty wild. Ben, back over to you here, too. Let's take a look at maybe dropping down the irons. And, you know, we, you know, let's, and, and give us your experience. You fish up the Northeast as well versus down here and in the Gulf of Mexico. Let's talk about jigging for the tuna. It's definitely uh, marking fish because, I mean, if, if you're not marking them, you just fish in, in the ocean, you know. Um, you're pumping your arms. Right. You know, getting a good workout in. Yeah. So it, it's, it's funny. So golf-wise, most of the time when you're, when you're on the jig, it's trying to catch bait. All right. Um, and it's... On the, on, the, on the East Coast, it's a little different. You're, you're catching eating sized fish. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, what, what I found is, is in the Bahamas, mm -hmm. it, it's a great tactic. However, it, it's one thing that definitely rings the dinner bell then for the sharks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they, they'll, they'll commit to the fish that are on the jig more than anything else. However, though, you get a lot of bites just mm -hmm. because those are reactionary bites. You know, these fish that are, that are, that are deeper that aren't necessarily responding to the surface if you're live chumming. You know, you'll, you'll get those fish to bite. Um, I found that that the, the fish up north are, are um, it's, it's like a different breed. You have less predators, right. it seems. seems. Yeah, you know I mean, so you have, uh, you know, you'll, you'll get a lot more shots at, at catching fish and you don't necessarily have to drop down uh, tackle wise. At least I've seen for like the, the canyon fish sure. if you're there jigging them, you know, and like, like, you know, nighttime fish, you're marking them. You know, or if you're setting up for the chunk and you're marking them, you want to go ahead and start jigging, so. Absolutely. And Ariel, uh, a lot of people go out and they, they, they drop those irons for, for black and tuna. If you had to narrow it down to maybe the setup as far as maybe, is there, does a the color make a difference when you're marking them? What pound leader would you put? And what are the subtleties in working that iron? Do you try to find where these fish are at? Take us through what you feel will be the most successful way for somebody to come out to your humps or the wrecks if they mark the black fins to get them on irons. 
Well, I think the mistake people make is not straight up, stay, stay straight up and down with the, with the jig. A lot of times the current takes it in an angle and you're not, you're not jigging right on the fish you're marking. So yeah, mark the fish, get in front of them, uh, drop your jig to whatever depth the fish are, you're marking your fish and start working it. But try to stay with the line, parallel to the line. So straight you can, up and down. Yeah, straight up and down. Perfect. And we're gonna go straight up and down to a commercial break, but we're coming right back to you and we're gonna pick up on catching light tackle tunas. And this segment here, we'll be trying to get them on the irons. We'll be right back with the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. The Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series is brought to you by Columbia Sportswear, stay cool and protected while fishing. JL Audio, ahead of the curve. ACR, building survival products since 1956. Florida Keys and Key West, visit flakeys.com. George will be right back. Welcome back to the 35th Annual Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series from the IGFA in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Let's get right back to George. You're watching the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series filmed on location at the International Game Fish Association. I'm working with Captain Ariel Madero on light tackle tuna, and the topic right now is catching black fins with jigs. All right, so the big key is staying straight up and down on top of these fish and not letting that line angle out. Is there, if you're marking fish per se on your sonar, do you drop the iron to them? Do you try to go beneath them? Do you try to keep that jig just a little bit above them? And what type of retrieve would you do? Would you work that radically or would you have a constant straight up fast motion? Tell me about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I like to drop the jig right on them. Okay. Uh, um, and uh, same thing, I like to work it fast. You know, uh, I don't know how they call it, like walking the dog, just jig, jig and, jig and retrieve, jig and retrieve. And you're going uh, fast, it's not I'm walking the dog, fast. it's dragging a dog. Yes, <laughs> there you go, dragging the dog. So yeah, I like to work it fast and uh, bring it up maybe 100 feet and drop it back down yep. and kind of work that area. Very good. Joe, jigging for the tunas up there, be it yellow fins or blue fins, give me an idea of the setup and, and what's the subtleties involved in, are, again, are you marking them first before you drop it on them? Uh, and what would be any subtleties in actually working these irons? Well, we're typically anchored up. So one of the easiest things that we found to work I know where this is, going, is go putting it in the Go rigger. Hardboard. We have a Carolina boat and we roll more than most boats. So we put it way up in the rigger and it's actually eight feet like this. And you just put it there, forget about it. When the rigger pops, you, you reel, reel up the slack and they're on. And you'd be amazed at how much we actually get bit by doing that. Sure. It's unbelievable. Let the boat do all the motion and then you go over there and just crank it and the fish it. are on. Perfect. Uh, just real quickly, I just want to talk about some of the jigs that work super well, be it on the hump. We use these up there in New England before as well. This is a Williamson, it's one of the new one. It's called the Kinsaki jig. And what I liked about this the most, it, it's really a, offset design, which gives us a, a really weird wobble, like a really hurt bait fish. But more importantly than that, is you look at the twin sets of, of these hooks that they have on the back of them. These are lighter wire hooks. So if you're dropping down, say for black fins with 20 pound braid, or some of the yellow fins, do you wanna go with 30 pound braid? Less effort to set those hooks, but they're still strong compared to some of the single strand uh, are, are single hooks that they have on some of the larger ones. So I found myself actually changing these out uh, on the single hook rigs. And there it is here, it's the uh, VMC, it's a tandem assist hook. So you get a double shot of getting a hook in the tuna. Plus again, I'm going back to that lighter wire, which makes it a lot easier and lighter tackle to drive them hooks home. All right, let's get into maybe some of the little tricks of the trade and, and real short with the three or four minutes we have left. Ben, I'm gonna come to you. If you're live chumming to assist and getting the fish up, mm -hmm. every now and then, just give the boat a bump. Because sometimes that bait will gather underneath the boat, you bump them out, and then bam, you got, now they're up again. Now they're up feeding. So. Ariel, same with you. I want to know what you uh, found. It was either working top waters or working the irons. What are your best tips to score black fins in the keys? Um, with the top water, wait for the right moment, especially if they're chasing flying fish wait for the right moment to throw the popper in there. Um, I, you know, when that, kind of almost wait for that flying fish to get ready to land and try to get in that area because that tuna's right behind him. You know, he's following that, that flying fish. So it's a game of timing there. It, yeah, and with the live bait, same thing. 
put that boat in gear, push a live bit away from the boat. Get them up going crazy. Just hide under the boat. Joe, coming to you. What are you going to tell me? Uh, maybe one of the most crucial tips for bluefin or yellowfin on the top water uh, or the irons. Let's say matching matching your bait with the color jigs. You there know, you like um, the, you know, when we're out in the canyons, the squid we like them glow in the dark white, like cream colored ones. And then when we're in the bluefin grounds, trying to match the sand eels. So matching something that's with what they're feeding on. Gotcha, very, very good. I wanna thank Joe Trainer, Arrow Madero, Captain Ben Sharp, that session on light tackle tuna fishing, getting them on top waters and irons, the exciting way of doing it. If you have the opportunity, give it a shot. You're watching the Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series. Well, there you have it. This week's Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series presented by Bass Pro Shops and Mako Boats. Now, adhering to seminar series tradition, you still have an opportunity for a chance to maybe win one of the many door prizes we have available. Go to nationalseminarseries.com, log on to the door prize banner, and enter your name and contact information. At the conclusion of the seminar series, we will computer generate the winners of those prizes. So get right down to it. Oh.